I'm here with an illustrious guest, Eric Whiteback. What's happening? AKA, am I allowed to do this? First well, name. Uh, first name, Benjamin. So a lot of people don't know that. You have a huge following on social media, but people don't really know who Eric Whiteback or Benjamin is. They, they probably don't even know that your name is Benjamin. Most of them don't, that's true. Uh, what do you categorize yourself as? Yes, I mean, the sort of thing that I've branded myself as is just the Supreme Guy. Obviously, it's a brand that I've been into for a long time. I've collected stuff for a long time. And I've been interested in the brand a lot longer than I've been interested in social media and posting there. But uh, yeah, I've just branded myself the Supreme Guy and I try to do things that are creative and fun for everyone to enjoy around the brand. It's fair to say that you're a content creator. Yeah, I mean, I try to document more than I create, but yeah. I'm sure a lot of people are going to ask, how do you get everything? Uh, there's ways. Most of it, genuinely, the largest portion of it is through the front door like 95% of it is through the front door. People don't realize that and like, you know, 2014, 2013, like I was standing in line. And even even recently, like I haven't done many this season, but last season, I was in line almost every week. No. Um, and I didn't like, I didn't make that super public. I wouldn't like share my times with people and stuff. But like, yeah, I think there's something cool too about like going through the front door and doing it the real way. When did you actually start collecting? So I don't even know if I'd really consider myself a collector. I feel like a collector is someone more like my brother who's sort of trying to check off every item in one category. So he's trying to get every accessory ever created by Supreme. I consider myself more of just an enthusiast of the brand. So I don't have a specific checklist or anything I'm trying to complete, right. but I just kind of buy items that I like as I see them. What gave you the, the foresight to say, all right, I'm gonna actually use these items? Because a lot of people want to get them. Yeah, they'll like certain pieces, but then most of the time they'll just flip them. Yeah, totally. I think something that I realized with Supreme early on is that I felt like there was a lot of inaccessibility. And there were a lot of items of people like, man, like I wish I could have that, I wish I could have that. And I wanted to do something that really made the brand feel like more accessible to a lot of people and made people resonate with it more. And I saw that almost no one was using the accessories, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone was putting these things, they get them, sit it right on the shelf, right? And it never gets used. They don't even pop the battery in. They don't get a SIM card. This has a SIM card from T-Mobile in. Right. Shout out T-Mobile. I guess they just got a free plug. But, uh, <laughs> But yeah, so I just wanted to do something like that that really made it fun for everyone. Uh, and that was sort of the, one of the big ideas that I came on early was using accessories. What was the first item you actually used? Other than like you may, maybe oh, like a nice t-shirt yeah. or something like that. That's a really good question. I think one of the ones I used early on was the sled, if I remember right. And mm -hmm. so that was like a pretty hyped up item. And then I just took it and tried to like snowboard it down a big hill and wiped out. And it did like really good on analytics. People seemed to enjoy it and I was like, oh, this is interesting. I do two things. It's sort of like opposite ends of the spectrum, right? So on one hand, I actually do track analytics and I'm pretty intentional about trying to post things that will do well. But on the other hand too, I want to do things that are true to me, things that are authentic and things that I think people will really enjoy. And so if there's overlap there, that's awesome. But I care more about authenticity than I care about analytics. We're both aware of this guy named Soul Street, right? Yeah, of course. I wouldn't even say collect. He loves to just buy up a lot of items. Yeah. How did you and your brother come to an agreement like, all right, we're going to like form these personalities on social media and we're yeah. going to go about it this way instead of just becoming resellers when we have access to all these No, products. totally. I think like I don't have anything against reselling and I used to do that back in the day, but I think one of the big issues with reselling from a business standpoint is it's hard to scale. Um, and that was something that we sort of saw early on and we were like, we don't want to be stuck as just resellers for like a long time career. I think it was like something that we both did in college a little bit to make a few bucks here and there, but it's right. nothing that we ever really did like full time or anything like that. And yeah, the, this whole social media play was very strategic for both of us. It was, you know, we created these brands, we created these personas and it's very much like, you know, Joe's the more, uh, he's, he's the more, He's just like a more, more of a collector and he's more of someone that knows the brand knowledge and is someone that's more viewed as like an OG and how he does his, how he handles his business. And I'm someone that's a little bit more fun, a little bit more out there. We, we've always sort of played off each other in this way and it's always been, it's always been strategic from the jump. We ultimately wanted to open some sort of clothing store in New York City. We thought that would be like a really fun thing for us to do. And we sat down three years ago, we said, all right, what are the things we can be doing now to sort of stack the deck in our favor? Obviously opening your own store, or anything like that, a retail store in New York City is a really hard thing to do. So we're like, what can we do now to sort of stack the deck in our favor? He was at a job that you know wasn't in the industry and I was in college and we felt like we had a little bit of extra time to focus on some things and the big thing that we came up with that we could focus on was social media and so social media really was never meant to be the the end goal and it still is not the end goal right um, but yeah it was something that that now has sort of become a little bit of a primary thing for the time being let's talk about your website yeah talk about it. <laughs> you told me off camera that you sell a lot of weird stuff on there yeah that people think are fake it's a joke but it's real I think that's the best way to describe it. Okay, so what am I holding here? You are holding individual Swarovski crystals from the Supreme Swarovski box logo t-shirt that dropped 
And how much are you charging for these? Uh, it's 10 bucks plus 10 bucks shipping, so it's 20 bucks a pop. Uh, I have a flat $10 rate shipping, so I'm not trying to fleece people on shipping. But, uh, <laughs> okay. So if you buy a million items, it's 10 bucks shipping, but a few people buy just these two, so it comes out to 20 bucks if you're buying just those. But yeah, it's one crystal from the t-shirt, which I think has about a thousand crystals on it. Um, but yeah, it's got my little logo. It's got the little authentic Supreme Swarovski crystal. So I gotta get those, I gotta mail those out later today. Viewers that are watching this, they're gonna say, they're gonna call you dumb for doing that. <laughs> but it's not really dumb if somebody else buys it well, off of you. No, and it's not really meant to be something that like people are buying. I didn't, I didn't put this stuff on my web shop for people to buy it or to make money. That's not the goal. The goal is that when people go on there, they get a laugh and they think it's funny. And that's like, that's so much of my personal brand. This is not about, it's not about me profiting or remaking money. It's about like, I want people to enjoy the experience of consuming my content, of seeing the things that I create, of, you know, watching that video or seeing that photo. I just want people to like smile and enjoy that. And that's what I'm all about. It's not about like, yo, I'm trying to make 10 bucks off someone on a crystal. Like I didn't, I didn't put those on the site for people to buy it and think anyone was going to buy it. And so it's just- But if they happen thing. to buy it, then yeah. great. Yeah, if they happen to buy it, great. And then I guess it's just another piece of like, a piece of me in some way that they can enjoy. Well, what are some other weird stuff that's, or jokes on your website? Um, that is for sale. So I, you can buy a FitPick appearance. Okay. It'd be $3,000. It comes with a free follow back. Uh, wow. But yeah, you know, I, I say, you know, post a picture of me and you on your page, make it look like we're homies, whatever. That type of thing. Um, okay, well, what is the weirdest joke uh, item that they bought. Uh, that would you, bought? Would you say the fit pick or the follow back? So someone bought a follow back for 500 bucks. Um, I also so, sold a personalized fit pick. So I like in the description that says like, I'll put together an outfit that I won't post a picture of on social media. I'll send the picture to you and do with it, do with it what you want. You know, leak it to TMZ or keep it just for your own eyes. I feel like you're a trailblazer, man. I, I could see a lot of celebrities and athletes doing that. Yeah, man, it could be something that people catch on to. But I don't know, it's just like a fun idea that I had, and I hope people like find it as funny and enjoyable as I do. I found some people in the comments like, imagine charging someone 3,000 bucks for a Fitbit. It's like, guys, it's like a joke. Like, you're not meant to buy it. When you do these Supreme videos on your Instagram, what are the comments like? Are they receptive? Are they, do they think you're stupid? Yeah, I mean, some people really try to throttle positive and negative messaging in their own comments. So some people, what I mean by that is, some people will delete negative comments and will block people that are posting negative comments. That's something that I've always, mm -hmm. I've, I've never done that once. I don't have a single person that I'm blocking on all of social media. Um, and so I, I think that my, the reception that I get is majorly positive, I say mm -hmm. 90, 90 plus percent positive, but I think there are a lot of changes too happening in the streetwear world. Um, and a lot of people are looking for a place to point as to why those changes are happening. I sort of happen to be the figurehead of like the youth movement in streetwear, at least in Supreme. Mm. Um, and I, so I think that finger gets pointed at me sometimes. But yeah, I, I am totally open to all discussion about what people think about my personal brand. And I don't want to throttle that whatsoever. If people think it's positive and fun, awesome, thumbs up. If people think it's stupid or you know they want to clown me or whatever they want to say, I'm with it too. Like I want to hear those voices. Do you like the term hype beast? Not really. I mean, I don't know. I, I sort of define myself as one, and there was a while where the sort of the tagline that I gave myself was making hype beast cool again. Um, it is a little bit of a loaded word though, yeah. and it's like I don't know. There's so many different components to what it means. You weren't really into Supreme when they had those lineups, those those random. Uh, you have to show up to a park and. No, I was totally into Supreme then, but for me, it just like there was no logistical way that I could get there for anything. Cause mm -hmm. like, it worked better when I could sign up online. All right, I got a good spot, cool, I can skip class this Thursday. But I couldn't like come to New York, wait for them to drop a location, go to the location, sign up, then go back to school, then go back to New York to get the drop. Like it just didn't work. So that system for me was like, it just was a no-go. Are you currently still in school? No, I graduated in December. Oh, uh, okay, so you're, you're a grown man now. <laughs> I don't know if I'd say that. Uh, okay. But I'm out of school. Okay, so obviously, you need a source of income now. What, yeah, what's totally. the next, what's the gameplay? Yeah, so I mean, I try to keep my content as, um, I try not to water it down at all with, right. with sponsored content, but I do sometimes put sponsored content into the mix. You need it. Yeah, no, totally. And it's like, it's an awesome source of revenue and I try to work with people that treat me really well and allow me to sort of uh, have my own creative energy to the things that I'm doing. And so like an example of someone that's awesome to work with is StockX. And I can imagine. I know that like, whatever, but they are, they give me total creative control over the content that I'm creating. And that just allows me to deliver them the best end product. And if they're after brand awareness, for example, they just say, hey, you know, 
put StockX in the caption of the video, whatever, and just make sure that some of the items in the video are available on our website. And when they give me that sort of freedom, uh, it just allows me to create something for them that's awesome and gets like, you know, through the roof impressions and analytics and things like that. And plus, then to my, you know, consumer, the person consuming my content, it doesn't feel like an ad either. What's the best content you've ever made and what's the most underrated content you've made that you thought could have done? Better. Um, I think the thing that I'm like most proud of is probably when we did the full-size BMW. 